What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, we're going to touch upon a very sensitive topic and something that maybe not many people actually ask themselves before consigning their cards or leaving their cards in the hands of somebody else. And this is spurred on by a recent news when Coinbase's stock prices went down from $400 to $50 per share, a massive decline since its IPO days. And a very good and interesting question came up where potentially if Coinbase and any uh, alike crypto exchange does declare bankruptcy, there's a potential that the funds that are in their exchange, um, so if I have crypto, uh, you know, living in Coinbase, it could potentially just get wiped out along with a bankruptcy. So that got me to thinking about, of course, our sports card and trading card space. And there are platforms out there where we trust with our assets without really, uh, you know, liability or insurances attached to them. And so I wanted to touch upon that today. Let's get started. <music> So really quickly, what I'm talking about here is, for example, there are a lot of people who leave their cards in the vaults um, of other companies. There are big ones like uh, Golden, PWCC, Alt, etc. And you know we choose to leave our cards in those vaults and platforms for many different reasons. One, it may not be safe for you to keep them at home, uh, some of these high value cards. Number two, it may not be feasible because you live abroad, uh, not in the United States. So uh, it may not be as feasible to do transactions if you keep your cards at home. So in order to leave the cards within the U.S., you choose to use a third party. And lastly, which is, I think, for a lot of people, they choose to leave the cards in you know places like PWCC, Golden, etc., because there is that ease of transaction. So when you want to throw something into you know PWCC's um, auction or Golden auction um, or Alt liquid auction, you can choose to do that very easily, uh, almost you know in a click of a button to move the card in the vault into the marketplace and have that in a live auction format or it doesn't even have to be live auction both alt and pwcc has uh, programs where you can just choose to have the card out for sale perhaps not for auction but maybe a buy it now so there are many different reasons why some of these services are incredibly helpful in you know rotating and you know making transactions of our cards uh, very uh, easy but I do ask questions like, you know, whether it is intended or not, right? So intended, you know, in, in a malicious way, a company can go and say, you know what, we are uh, struggling financially or, you know, there's a lot of assets sitting in our vault and we just want to run away with it, right? So that's the intended malicious intent um, and to, you know, go and run with the cards or even, you know, unintended, right? So we've seen cases with Mark's cards, um, you know, where they essentially uh, took cards from people, raw cards, and, you know, promised a service where they will get graded by a third party called PSA um, and received upfront payments. But, you know, due to, I mean, I don't know the full details, but I, from a third party perspective, believe that this wasn't really intended from, you know, Mark's cards to, from the get-go to, you know, steal, uh, you know, money from people who get advanced payments and then never return back their cards um, graded. Uh, but I, perhaps th there was multiple steps of misjudgment in terms of just business decisions. I don't know to the fullest extent, or maybe business didn't perform as they had anticipated, but they had used customer, uh, you know, unearned revenue for some, some other purposes. I don't know what the real case was, but anyways, there can be situations where, you know, these kind of bankruptcies or, you know, companies going under is you know, oftentimes unintentional. So, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty always, of course, but let's, you know, just take a example, a wild example that, you know, company like, um, let's say Golden or PWCC just completely goes underwater for whatever reasons. Let's say the vault catches on fire. I don't know if that's possible, right? Or the vault just gets like slammered with like a nuclear bomb, like there's a war and a nuclear bomb hits the vault and the entire asset um, kept in the vault just goes you know, like into into fire or maybe less dramatically, right? Maybe there was a theft or maybe, um, you know, there was a business decision to leverage customer cards and, and consigned cards to do something else with it. And, you know, in the hopes of getting it back, but they didn't, you know, like there are situations that, you know, is even unf unfathomable right now in our minds that can happen i.e. Mark's cards, uh, a very recent and latent experience uh, and example. So in these cases, what is 
sort of like the defined and written down law uh, or rule around that. I think sports cars industry, um, you know, is obviously um, not as regulated as many of the other industries. For example, in banking, right, commercial banking, personal banking, you are uh, essentially insured by the FDIC of the assets. So the, you know, cash or whatever other assets that you keep with, for example, your bank, Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, whatever E-Trade, whatever it is, you are insured of that value, even if the company goes bankrupt, right? Or whatever happens to the to the bank themselves. Um, however, for cases like, again, I'm just naming out big examples here, um, you know, of like big players like PWCC, Golden Alt. If something does happen, I don't know um, if there are fine lines that are already written out of what the next steps are in order to recoup back, you know, your asset and your your money. And another important thing in this hobby is, you know, yeah, like money matters. But I think for a lot of us, um, a card that is valued, let's say $30,000 is not the same as a cash of 30,000. There's much more meaning behind it. You know, I don't know how many people would just say, um, you know, your card burned down the fire, um, your assets were worth $200,000. So here's a check for 200,000. I mean, for me, at least personally, I would still be very upset and, you know, like very sad about the situation because perhaps monetarily, you know, I was paid out, but there was something more about the card beyond sort of the dollar, you know, attached to it that I really liked about, right? That's the whole point is that we, we put money into these assets because we love it more than cash. That makes sense. Um, at least for me, right? Uh, personally. So I think no matter what, I would be very, very sad um, and you know, at the fact that I may not see those valuable cards, uh, those cards that meant so much to me ever again. And so, you know, I don't have any answers again, you know, just like my previous video, but it's just a thought bubble of, you know, like as we get more of these sort of bigger corporations and, and more platforms, you know, to be honest, coming on to the industry, what is the, the covering of basis that is available for the users, right? Um, you know, is it just purely trust-based? Because, you know, if I, for example, give my friend all my cards um, and say, hey, can you keep this in your house because you live in a safer neighborhood than I do, and then he suddenly gets robbed, for example, um, I don't have bases or grounds to recoup that amount. It was purely, it was voluntary that I went and did that. I'm not a lawyer or anything uh, even remotely close to that, but I don't think I have grounds to even like go to, you know, court with it. I'm, not that I would um, because I voluntarily asked my cards to be kept at my friend's home. Um, so I wonder if the concept works similarly for these vaulting and consignment companies where it's purely trust-based or is it mostly trust-based um, or are there actually, you know, bounds and restrictions where there can be ways to, you know, recoup uh, the card or the financial loss if something unforeseeable happens, right? Again, whether that's intended or not, you know, things can happen and they do happen uh, now and then. Um, so yeah, this article that I came across about Coinbase, which, you know, really, I would say is one of the forerunners of revolutionizing and making uh, it accessible for a lot of people to get into cryptocurrency. Um, you know, seeing their downfall in terms of just their market cap just tanking, um, you know, quite a bit from $400 to $50 a share. Um, and these talks of like potential bankruptcy, right? Like people are playing out scenarios of if there was a bankruptcy, what would happen to the assets and, and the crypto that is kept within the exchange. And there is a big hypothesis that it could potentially get wiped out, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, that middleman um, kind of concept of like having a bank, having an exchange, having, you know, vaults or et cetera. There are oftentimes good things of that, of course. Um, again, ease of transaction, uh, ease of mind, um, you know, operation wise, it's, it's super smooth, but there's a big downside of like, you don't know what's going to happen if the worst case scenario happens, if that makes sense. Anyways, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching everyone. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. That was awesome.